How's it going, everybody? I figured with all of the uh, the news going on right now about the Alaska Airlines pilot who tried to reach up and pull the fire handles and uh, shut down an aircraft in flight, that I would sort of make a video from a maintenance perspective on exactly what goes into a fire suppression system, how they work, and what actually would have happened had he been successful in pulling said fire handles. So if that's interesting to you, stick around and I'm going to explain some of that. I just want to jump in here for one second and film a quick correction. I'll say several times in the video that they were going from Alaska to California. I read the news article. I somehow got confused. It's Air Alaska flight. They were going from Washington to California. So just ignore that mistake as you watch the video. Look what I found. It's an aircraft engine. Specifically, this is a CFM 56 like you would find on the Boeing 737 and many other aircraft. This is a high bypass turbofan, and this is an example of one engine that might have a fire suppression system. Now, when you actually discharge the fire suppression system, it's just like a fire extinguisher going off. And where that fire extinguisher is going to go is all around the outside of the engine. None of that agent actually goes through the engine, it goes around the outside of it, because more than likely, if there is a fire, they're banking on the fire is going to be out here because there's already a fire going on down inside of the combustion can that I want. I need that one. So I don't want to put that one out. However, I'm going to explain more that that one goes out anyways, and I'll tell you why. First off, what happened? Well, an Alaska Airlines flight going from Alaska to LA. I'm going to move this just a second. Much better. An Alaska Airlines flight traveling from Alaska to LA had an off-duty pilot in the jump seat. So there was a pilot and a co-pilot who were in charge of the aircraft and an off-duty pilot in the jump seat riding, taking a free ride back to California, if you will. So halfway through the flight, somewhere over Portland or in the Portland, Oregon area, he reached up and tried to discharge the fire suppression system. Now, I'm not here to report the news or, or any of the exact details of it, but for the duration of my video, I'm going to refer to him as old boy. And we need to understand how a fire suppression system works. So firstly, I'd like to talk about the actual handles themselves. In order to pull a fire suppression system, you actually have to take a couple of steps depending on the aircraft, the installation, and the design. They are, however, double guarded. What that means is you cannot just reach up and flip the switch and blow all the fire agent all over the engine. No, you actually have to, in some cases, lift a safety guard of some kind, then pull the handle out and then twist it in order to get that agent to disperse. Now some you just pull the handle and you twist it. And they do that because pulling a handle is not enough or throwing the switch is not enough to discharge the agent. That could happen on accident. So in order to do it, you actually have to make a second movement, which is that turning at 90 degrees to get the agent to release. Now a couple of things happen when you pull the fire handle. One, there is one handle for each engine and the APU, or each APU if there is more than one. So just because you pull it for one engine doesn't mean you lose all engines, okay? When you pull that handle, you're going to shut off fuel to the engine at the firewall, you're going to shut off hydraulics to the engine at the firewall, and you're going to shut off electrical power to the engine at the firewall. Not, not just power in, but also power out, because the engine has a giant starter generator on it that is generating power for the aircraft. It will also disconnect the bleed air system because you don't want everybody inside the cockpit and in, ingesting a bunch of uh, um, carbon monoxide agent or whatever it is that's in that fire bottle. So that gets cut off and basically that engine is just cut off at the firewall. Now again, there are three fire handles. So just because you successfully pull one does not mean that engine number two also goes out. Engine number two will continue to operate normally and engine number two, if the aircraft is designed properly, should be able to sustain the aircraft in level flight until it can make an emergency landing. However, let's say the worst case, that old boy had managed to pull all the fire handles. And I'll say he didn't pull the APU for the sake of the video, but he could have, right? If you reach up and you pull engine one and you pull engine two real quick and you get them both out, okay, the aircraft is still going to glide. Just because it's lost engines doesn't mean that it stops flying. And this is a common misconception that people have due to the movies. And I'll say one movie that did actually get it right 
was um, what's the movie with Tom Hanks where he plays Captain Sully who lands on the Hudson? Doesn't matter. Okay. In that movie, when they hit the birds and the engines go out, he starts running through the checklist and he says, you know, fire up the APU, and they do. And then he turns and he says, we're not going to make it to that airport. We're going to go in the Hudson. And he just glides all the way into the Hudson. Now, the reason that happened is because that aircraft was already at such a low altitude. But you're in a, if you're in a passenger airliner flying at 35,000 feet and you lose the engines, you've got quite a lot of time that that aircraft is going to glide down, sort of like a kite. Now, I'm not here to talk about flight characteristics, what kind of drag is going to be put into the aircraft, how difficult it's going to be control, any of that. I'm just telling you that when you shut the engines off, it's not a death sentence. The aircraft will still glide very safely to the ground. You can still put the gear down. You can still use most of the functions. Assuming that you have an APU, you can even keep the cabin pressurized. Now, in the case of all of them being discharged, including the APU, it's a little more difficult because the cabin would depressurize, the oxygen masks would more than likely come out, and then the pilot would have to fly the aircraft to the ground with reserve power. So either battery power or backup power, hydraulic power that's left in the accumulators. But again, it's still possible because aircraft have a whole lot of redundancy systems in them. This isn't why they have two engines, but that's part of the reason they have two engines. If you have two engines and one fails, you still have another one. And it's like that with everything on airplanes, for the pressurization system, for the cabin atmosphere control systems, for the DI systems, for the ignition systems. There is redundancy after redundancy after redundancy and backup after backup after backup in order to keep the airplane safe, assuming you did in fact lose engine power, which, is kind of what I believe the Alaska Airlines pilot, uh, oh boy, was trying to do. Why he was trying to do it, nobody knows, but at any rate, that was his decision. So, I hope you found this video at least a little bit helpful. If you didn't find it helpful, maybe, maybe you just found it entertaining and now you understand a little bit more about how fire suppression systems work. And before anybody jumps in my comments and starts screaming, this is, you shouldn't be telling people how to, how to discharge the system, this is proprietary information, calm down. The FAA publishes the 8083 aircraft mechanics textbooks on their website for free. And all of the information that I have shared here is in those textbooks. So this isn't like protected information that's proprietary that only you can know if you need to know. Anyone can find this stuff out. So I don't feel any, I don't feel any type of way about putting it out there into the firmament for people to listen. So as always, if you found the video entertaining, be sure to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, go join the Discord, get your AMP, I don't know, follow me on Instagram, go build something, and as always, be easy.